Alright, we're going to talk about Twitter and what it's all about. So, Twitter helps you create and share ideas and information instantly without barriers. And that's actually Twitter's description of itself. So you can find that on Twitter's About page. Now that's the pretty cool thing about Twitter, and it's also the dangerous thing about Twitter, is within two seconds you can share something with the entire world. A few misconceptions about Twitter. All people do is tweet about what they ate for breakfast. Um, yeah, there's quite a few people out there who do that. But out of 500 million tweets a day, you're bound to get several pretty bad ones. There are some really good tweets out there, like this one from Barack Obama immediately after he won the presidential election in 2012. And this was actually the most retweeted tweet in the history of Twitter at the time. So that means the most people who saw this message shared it at the time. You don't think you're interesting enough to use Twitter? Well, one of the coolest things about Twitter is just finding interesting people to follow and consuming the content that they create. You don't have to actually share anything to use Twitter. And I think that's the greatest part about Twitter. There's a lot of different opinions on things, so you can get a ton of different information out there on Twitter. There's so many official businesses that have Twitter. I've listed a few here. Obviously, you've heard of TED Talks, NASA, CNN, a lot of sports sites like ESPN, um, individual people, Jimmy Fallon, Brad Paisley, Neil Tyson Degrassi. There's just so many different people on Twitter, and there's a lot of really cool content out there. And you don't want to share everything in your life with everyone. Um, that's understandable, but Twitter does have privacy settings. So you can control who sees what you tweet. Again, you can just follow a certain subset of people, consume their content, and then if you have a few friends on Twitter, maybe you're, they're the only people who you want to see what you tweet, you can set it that way. A little bit of background information on Twitter. I think the most important piece of information here is that 76% of Twitter active users are on mobile. Now that's pretty significant. That can be a good thing, that can be a bad thing for you as a teacher, but I think the benefit it gives you is if you're going to use Twitter in your classroom, you can almost guarantee that every single kid knows how to use Twitter on their phone. We'll go over some of the basics of Twitter then. The first thing is the handle. The handle is kind of your username and it always begins with the at symbol. This is how you would find somebody else on Twitter. You would search at Corey Romden or whatever somebody's handle is. These are unique. You can't have the same handle as somebody else. I'll jump back for a moment. You'll see right above the Lux Casco Soccer, right here is the handle, at Lux Casco Soccer, there's this header, LC Soccer Club. Anybody can have the same header. So I could name myself Justin Timberlake in my header if I wanted to. The header is not unique, it's just how you describe yourself to other people. So followers are kind of like Facebook friends. These are the people who can see what you tweet. Now you can set privacy settings so that people have to be approved to be your followers, or you can just be a public profile so that anybody can choose to follow you. And you'll always see on your profile how many people are following you. Again, these are just the people who can see anything that you tweet or retweet. The timeline is where everything happens. This is a running total of all tweets from people you follow. You'll see the most recent tweet is always at the top and it auto populates. So this thing, if you follow enough people, it's just constantly filled. You'll get several tweets, sometimes every second. So this is kind of where everything happens. You see everybody's tweets in your timeline. So 
now we're right down to the bare bones of it. A tweet then is basically like a text message that you send out on the internet. It's a message of 140 characters or less, and anybody who follows you can see what you tweet. So then a retweet is when somebody thinks that you shared something interesting and they want their followers to see it. So it's kind of like sharing something that somebody else posted on Facebook. That'd be the equivalent. So let's say Tom over here follows me and I tweet out something interesting. Well, he knows that Susie doesn't follow me, but Susie follows him. So he retweets and then Susie can see everything that I tweeted. Basically, they, that retweeted tweet is what she sees. So you're just sharing something that another user tweeted. Mentions and replies are how you communicate with other people on Twitter. So you'll notice here, Jason Wildey mentions TWC, Time Warner Cable, in his original tweet here. You just use the at handle for whoever you're trying to mention. And then they'll get a notification that they were mentioned in somebody else's tweet. And then you'll see right below that tweet, you've got two people who responded to Jason Wilde's tweet. So a reply is a tweet that begins with a user's handle and it's meant in response to something that they tweet. So here Rob Domofsky started with at Jason J. Wilde to reply to his tweet. Same thing with Nagler. Hashtags are where things get real interesting. Um, I'm sure you've heard of hashtags, you've probably seen people use them pretty indiscriminately, but they actually are useful if used correctly. So hashtags are keywords that make tweets easier to search for, and kind of an example of that, Jimmy Fallon has a hashtags game. So on his late night show, he will tweet during the day something like this, for example, tweet a weird, funny, or embarrassing story about an awkward date you've been on, and tag it with this hashtag. So then during his show, he searches for all the tweets that people have used, including that hashtag, and he reads some funny ones, like that one down there at the bottom. So it's kind of a way for you to thread conversations or to tag that you're talking about a certain topic. And they can be really useful if they're not just used like crazy. So an example of somebody using Twitter in their classroom, um, Allie Shanoffer actually uses her own Twitter handle in her U.S. history class. You can see this is her Twitter handle. And she uses it to remind students about assignments, deadlines, quizzes, tests. She, ser she shares some interesting information with them that's pertinent to the topics they're discussing in class, or she actually gets discussions going on Twitter and they use hashtags to kind of sort through so that she knows who is tweeted and what hour they're in. So these are a couple of examples of the reminders that she sends out. You'll see some lecture notes, homework, Schoology stuff. These are some some examples of stuff she sent out on Martin, Mar Martin Luther King Jr. Day. So you can see it's just kind of a little informational tidbit. It's kind of interesting for students to be a supplement to what you're covering in class. And she also sends out discussion questions on Twitter. She has students answer them and hashtag with US history and the hour they're in. And this is really useful because obviously a lot of students have Twitter. So you tweet out and it runs across their timeline, it can be a nice little reminder or maybe you do engage them in a discussion. It's just kind of a nice little supplement to your class content. So obviously Allie has rules about what she does with Twitter. She doesn't follow any students on Twitter. She wants them to keep their own sense of privacy. She doesn't really want to see what they're tweeting. So she doesn't follow anyone. She only has the students follow her teacher account. Inappropriate material is not tolerated, and in her set of rules, she basically says, if you wouldn't say it in school, don't tweet it. 
and any disciplinary action would be brought to the office just like normal. And she doesn't require students to have a Twitter account. So you'll see here, the two students on the top don't have Twitter accounts. Well, when she does a discussion question, she just has those students submit their answers, and then she tweets out with a ha their name in the hashtag. So that they don't need to have Twitter, but they can still participate in the discussion. And then everybody can see who is participating there. So some of the issues that she's run into are that students don't want to or are not allowed to use Twitter. And again, like I just described, she actually tweets content that students bring to her. So she tries to involve everyone that way. And privacy settings can be an issue. If somebody follows you, but you don't follow them, then whatever they tweet, you can't see. So for example, since Allie doesn't follow any of the students, if they, t if they have their privacy settings set so that nobody can see what they tweet except their followers, and Allie doesn't follow them, then she can't see what the students are tweeting if they're tweeting at the class. So creating a Twitter account is really simple, and I'm actually going to create a separate video to go over how to do that. So that kind of wraps up this one.